Many times in the history of the world and in the history of wars, weather has been one of the causes of success or failure on battlefields. Her whims caused droughts, floods, and the resulting crop failures. It also detained the Emperor of France, Napoleon Bonaparte himself. But why did Hitler, choosing the date of June 22nd, the day of the above-mentioned Bonaparte's expedition to Moscow, make the same mistake as the Emperor, ignoring or not paying more attention to the weather that changed the fate of the war? What impact did winter have during World War I and World War II? June 22, 1941 the eastern border of the Soviet Union. The morning silence is broken by the thunder of cannons. German artillery shells pierce the air. Only a few realize what was about to come. Namely, the largest military operation in the history of the world has begun. On this day, which was not chosen by chance, exactly 129 years earlier, Napoleon Bonaparte sets out against Russia. After the signing of the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact, and the partition of Poland in 1939, the USSR and Germany shared a common border. Preparations for the war were intense, well masked by good neighborly relations. Both Hitler and Stalin waited for the right moment to deliver the killing blow. The intensive preparations of the Third Reich did not go unnoticed. The USSR intelligence with chief spy Richard Sorg provided precise information about troop movements near the eastern border of the Soviet Empire. He even gave the exact date of the start of the German offensive. However, all intelligence reports were ignored by Stalin. He thought he would be the first to surprise his opponent. The weather factor that was most significant during Operation Barbarossa was rain. From mid-October, it rained almost constantly for the following weeks. In a country where paved roads were scarce, the sea of sticky goo caused German armored and motorized units to lose most of their advantages. As Otk Missouri and Lopez write, For almost a month, the roads, trails, and paths were softened by autumn rains, making travel a muddy nightmare, to such an extent that, ironically, German generals dreamed of the arrival of earlier frosts, which they would harden the roads. For God's sake, fourteen days of frost, and we will surround Moscow, said General Hopner, commander of the 4th Panzer Group. The rainfall hampered the attack, but also strained the army's provisioning capabilities. Delivery problems have become a daily occurrence. Stretching hundreds of kilometers, the clogged supply lines were insufficient to transfer all the necessary resources to the front. Soldiers were often undereaten, and vehicles had only minimal fuel reserves. The conditions were affecting morale, and a quick and easy victory was becoming a pipe dream. The Germans, starting the attack on Russia on June 22, 1941, were convinced that the good physical condition of the soldiers and the defeat of the USSR troops in the conflict with Finland, called the Cold War, and lasted from November 30, 1939 to March 13, 1940, would allow them to win. However, they did not expect that their troops, like those of the USSR, would lose to the weather. During the conflict with Finland, Soviet soldiers could not withstand long periods of temperature drops below minus 40 degrees Celsius. For the Finns, hardened by frost, this was not a surprise and unbearable conditions. The German side, while conducting military operations already in September 1941, felt the first inconveniences on the battlefield resulting from weather nuisances. Heavy rain made it difficult to move heavy waxing equipment through washed out and softened areas. In addition, rainwater corroded the armored fleet and the first cases of infectious diseases began to appear among the German army. Deadly Avalanches During World War I The event of December 13, 1916, during the military operations between Austria and Italy, can be called one of the deadliest in which the forces of nature were deliberately used. After many weeks of heavy snowfall and severe frost, a sudden thaw came, surprisingly. The exhausted armies of both sides, clothes and food not adapted to the prevailing weather conditions on the Alpine front and not achieving victory over the other side, decided to use nature to achieve their military goals. The situation favored the Italians, whose troops were above the Austrian troops stationed in the mountain valleys and foothills. The Italians, using explosives, deliberately caused an avalanche that slid down directly at the Austrians. Millions of cubic meters of snow, accelerated to a considerable speed, hit the head of an avalanche 200 meters high. 
It is estimated that the prevailing pressure in the sliding snow mass reached even five tons per square meter. Over 200 Austrian soldiers were killed literally in an instant. Over the next few days, both sides of the conflict deliberately caused avalanches, decimating each other. It is estimated that as many as 10,000 people on both sides of the war died in this incident.